Hello, this is Larry Cantarelli. I'm a full-time trader and the editor and publisher of the Blue Chip Daily Trend Report. And today I've got a brief blog and video. We're going to take a look at bond yields, the stock market, inflation. It should be a short video, probably about 10 minutes or so. But what I wanted to cover is last week there was a lot of volatility and there was a lot of concern in the stock market about rising bond yields, potential inflation, and what it could do for stocks. And we saw a, a pretty big pullback and then the markets recovered. So what I wanted to do is actually take a look at some of the facts and some of the charts and, and go through uh, and see what's happened in the past. So to give you an idea, we're looking at a 10-year uh, treasury bond yield monthly chart. So we can see in the past 10 years, other than this current cycle, in 2012 to 2013, bond yields doubled. So they went from 139 to 298, so more than a double. And then again in 2016 to 2018, bond yields doubled from 133 to 324. And we can see here, even in 2016 alone, they almost doubled from 133 to 262. So a double 2012 to 2013, a double 2016 to 2018. Now, if we take a look at the S&P 500 in the exact same time period, we can see in 2012, to 2013, when bond yields doubled, the S&P 500 went up. And we can see once again, 2016 to 2018, as bond yields doubled, the S&P went up considerably. It had about, it looks like about a 40% or so move. So just to touch base, 2012, 2016, bond yields doubled, bond yields doubled, S&P 500, 2012, 2016, S&P went up, S&P went up. So what that tells us is, is that bond yields can go higher and stocks don't necessarily have to go down. So the reason that I'm showing this is there's there's an automatic uh, response, maybe in the media or online, that rising bond yields is just automatically bad for stocks. And that's not the case, as we can see by the past. Now, we're going to take a look at some inflation charts because this is very important. But before we do that, I wanna to touch base on the disclaimer, which says everything in the video is for informational purposes only. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. So here's, here's the key thing, and it's important to remember, and I've put together a blog that you can find on my website, bluechipdaily.com. Now here's the key thing to remember, and, and I wanna stress this. It's very important to understand that nothing that happened in the past is any guarantee of anything that's going to happen in the future. So what I mean by that is just because bond yields went up in the past and stocks went up in the past, doesn't necessarily mean that that has to happen in the future whatsoever. This is just two instances. And, and I don't want to imply that if bond yields go up, that stocks have to go up or that they can't go down. So that's the first thing. So we'll take a look at a couple items quickly. You can look at this blog at your convenience, and we're going to take a look at some charts in just a few minutes. But what we can see, so in the prior cycles, we can see what uh, treasury bonds were 2012 to 2013, 139.4 to 298.4, and then we can see they doubled again. 2012 to 2013, when bonds were at their, yields were at the low, S&P was 13.40. As yields went higher, S&P went higher, 298, 17, 20. Then we can see 2016, 2018, 133 on treasuries, 2200 on the S&P. Now they doubled here and the S&P did pull back. It looks like maybe 6% or so, but then they went higher and we can see the S&P from 2200 to 2940. So it, it's important to understand that if bond yields rise, stocks can rise, not that they will, not that they can't go down, but they can. And the reason that this whole conversation came up is because the inflation topic is, is first and foremost in the media, and it should be. It's in the market. So generally in inflationary environments, which is normally caused by a higher monetary uh, stimulus, a lot of liquidity, generally what happens is, is inflation sets in, commodity prices rise, and bond yields usually go higher. So we can see one year performance chart. This is from FinViz, but we can see inflation's already in the system. Lumber's almost tripled as we know, but we can see corn 
over 100% canola, over 100% copper, almost 100% soybeans, lean hogs, natural gas, 74%, silver, sugar, cotton, 44%, wheat, 41%. So we can see across the board, inflation's already in the system. So it, it's natural to expect with that inflation that bond yields could go higher. Now, I will say this, inflation is not necessarily bad whatsoever. Inflation is much better than the opposite, which is deflation. What inflation indicates is that there's a lot of consumer demand. Producers have pricing power. It generally indicates a stronger economy. So inflation's not bad whatsoever, although that's what the media is going to outline. And here's the key thing. There, are, there can be considerable winners and a lot of money to be made in an inflationary period. And as we can see just across the board, S&P 500, but there's a lot of opportunities in an inflationary environment. And these moves, and I can speak from history, I've actively been trading since 1998. These moves don't generally happen over the course of a few weeks. They can often take years to develop. So we'll take a look just to go through a few ideas. So we can see copper in an inflationary period, commodities generally do well. So we can see copper over the past 12 months has almost doubled from here. Actually, it is a double from here. Uh, crude oil, we can see steady uptrend in crude oil. This was a two and a half year daily closing high yesterday. So crude oil is in a strong uptrend. Agricultural, strong uptrend. Commodities basket, gold, uh, oil, uh, copper, various agricultural, strong uptrend. Freeport, this is uh, one of the largest copper miners in the world. We can see Freeport's been on a very strong move. XOP, which is oil, mine, uh, oil producers, energy producers, very strong uptrend. So what we can see is in inflationary periods, there's a lot of money to make. And once these moves start to take, to take way, which they are right now, they can go on for quite a while. So I think there's quite a few opportunities. So I've started to, as you know, for the people that have followed me on Twitter, for a while. So I've started to dial into this cyclical rotation, uh, these energy names, industrial names, going back to, to May and June of last year. So I've been well ahead of this. I've got a lot of cyclical positions from last year that are our triple digit winners right now that I've shared on Twitter, uh, shared these with the website members. So I've been uh, dialed into this, this value move and this value rotation going all the way back to last year. But I do think it's still early innings. So I put together a blog, top 20 inflation ideas. I put this together for the members. Uh, and this is something that you have access to as a member. But these are our top 25 posted uh, cyclical and or value ideas on the website over the past 12 months. So you can see these are shared with members in real time on the Twitter page. I email it every morning, and then we track it on the website. So we've got a lot of uh, big triple digit winners. This is not just something, not an idea that I came across last week, let's say. Gold miners, very big move. The miners are in the news quite a bit today. Gold, silver, big breakouts yesterday. I started to dial members into this. Actually, April the 8th is when gold miners and precious metals went on to the buy list. And we looked at a weekly MACD cross. So this has been a very strong move since then. So we've been about six weeks ahead of this move. And then also I posted yesterday on the, uh, on the public Twitter page. On Sunday, I put together a list for members, 20 top 20 inflation ideas, 15 stocks, five ETFs. I started to post it last week and then I refined it and finalized the list on Sunday. Uh, evening for members. So yesterday, all three indices were down. Of our, of our top 20 inflation ideas, 16 were up on the day. So 16 out of 20 were up on a day when all three indices were down. Seven were up over 2%. The top idea was up over 4.5%. So I, I continue to think that there's a lot of money that can be made uh, in this rotation, in this inflation up cycle if we get it. And by looking at the charts, it looks like that we definitely will. So the easiest way, if you want to get access to the top 20 inflation ideas, obviously we are accepting new members. 
If you go to my website, bluechipdaily.com, you can scroll through, look at some of the other top performers. You can join here. And, and as a member, obviously, you'd get access to the top 20 inflation ideas. And as I said, I continue to think that there's a lot of upside still left in these moves uh, and we'll see going forward. So I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you.